Dawn sent the sweetest baby gift that's in Liberty's nursery, and I look at it every morning, and she loves it, and you're invited to hang out anytime you want. You can thank Tim for that. He's a better person than me. <laughs>
Go ahead, Sarah. Sarah, Sarah. You touched on a little bit how the black community, you know, is reluctant to get the vaccine because of the Tuskegee incident and other situations where mm -hmm. black people were misused uh, by, uh, by medic medicine. And so I think it's great that you did it because you are a very important uh, and very well-known person. You know, and so that was you did a great thing. And yet and I and I want to say, look at all the white people who were getting it. I, I don't blame you for waiting yes. for the white people to do it, to tell you the truth. <laughs> I don't blame you, but now we're doing it. So now you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, none of you grew an appendage uh, uh, that no one knew about, so I felt comfortable. We are we're we're being light right now, but we also know. You know. Hey, hello. <laughs> hello, welcome to the View. I mean, it's just you know, I'm I'm daydreaming. I think in part because so many kind of amazing things have happened over the last 24 hours. You know, I jokingly said, "Hi, mom." You know, this this is Reverend Senator Raphael Warnock. She was elated, but not terribly impressed. She, she said, "That's." <laughs> That's good. This this is mom, and I'm I'm still in charge. And I said yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. That's funny. Well, I'm going to go ahead and address you as. Si Meanwhile, this guy withdraws from the Paris Agreement. He rolls back methane pollution regulations. He lowers emission standards. He tells us that science is useless and that trees are exploding, that there is no coronavirus, yeah. and who wants us to ingest bleach. Yeah. This guy has more ways of killing us than an Agatha Christie novel. God, it's what about you say? <laughs> He's killing us. Sonny, you're what I mean, but I think Megan, you were saying you you don't think it's it's not just about the schools. You're not sure about well, getting well, you back can, you can, you to can business and all okay. the things. I'm the only person technically no, no, without I'm, a child. I did, yet, so. I did finish. Okay. Oh, okay. No, no, I was uh, finished. Um, you know what? It, it's okay. Uh, let's move on. <laughs> Okay. According to a new survey by Dating.com, 75% of singles prefer a dad bod complete with tummy and love handles. Megan, yeah. what Come do you on. think? <laughs> I mean, whatever. I... Hugh Jackman? It was like Jack Black. <laughs> Who else was it? It was three pictures. Megan, do you think it's a good <laughs> idea for people to diagnose themselves by going on to Dr. Google? Uh, I don't know. I don't have a lot to say on this topic. I'm so sorry. What do you think, Megan? Where do you stand on this? This is a weird topic. I don't know. I have, like, a good relationship with... I don't know. I don't like talking about parenting topics. It's boring. Sorry. A woman who ran into her friend's ex-husband ended, ended up hitting it off with him. And Megan, you have any thoughts about this? <laughs> yeah, my thoughts about this are that Alexei Navalny is being held in a gulag in Russia right now, and he is slowly being killed, and the United States is doing nothing to sanction him, and we need to help Putin, Putin accountable, and he's going to die on our watch, and it is going to be cataclysmic for international relations, and any Democrat who cared about Russia needs to care about it now. Save Alexei Navalny. That's how I feel about dating your ex. We'll be right back. <laughs> Will we? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll be right back. Mom took to Twitter to complain after her fourth grade child was sent to Zoom detention for not paying attention in class. Well, I'll put this in your hands, Megan. What Do you think there's a point to any kind of Zoom, det <laughs> Zoom detention? I mean, I spent so much <laughs> of my life in detention. Like, I was always in detention, and I've always been contrarian. Yeah. I've always been a rabble-rouser. I've always been a straight shooter, even when I was, like, 10. And then in high school, I spent, like, a lot of time in detention, and there's quite a sense of community with right. people that you spend a lot of detention with. And I just like to say to my high school and to Sister Joan, who I have great respect for, but things turned out okay, even though I was always in detention and, like, cutting class and not wearing my uniform the right way. So it's okay, but I hate detention. Right. Like, but I was in there a lot. Right. Like, I think, like, right. like, I think my, I think it was, like, pretty bad. 
if I remember correctly, I had to do like yeah. way extra detention to graduate or something. I don't, it's like a while ago, but right. you know, I was just like never the perfect cheerleader. I was always a rabble rouser, even when I was young. We are right. who we are. Joy, as a, a, a former teacher, does this make oh. any sense at all? Yeah. Are you even paying attention to me? You're not even listening to me right now, are you? You don't care about this. No, I care about You don't about, care about all these I care topics. About Who are you telling? Be I do, Brooklyn, because it is my job to care. 15 years we've been together. To care, I, and so I do. In California's a mess. All my friends that live in California are either leaving or complaining and sending me videos about the overwhelming homeless problem that they have. I have friends that work in the uh, the beauty industry and the food service industry who worked like four months last year. So hey, I just Whoopi, thought we could encompass all of it. One of my closest friends wrote Dr. Strange, see Robert Cargill. My issue with Kathy Griffin is, um, you know, I'm gonna name drop, Clay Aiken is one of my closest friends in the entire world. Um, you know, I have a friend who was on Capitol Hill during the attack. This is a story that has impacted me greatly because one of my closest friends, who I consider a sister, my friend Janice Dean, were having COVID positive patients put in there and dying, including my own friend, Janice Dean's mother and father-in-law. Senator Gillibrand, I just wanna say I really commend you working across the aisle. Uh, I have all my family members are in the military, including my sister-in-law, and I have personal friends who have been violently uh, assaulted while in the military. And my friend Bethany Mandel was tweeting she has five children. But I have very good friends who live in the UK. If I have a lot of anxiety over the new mask mandate that's just been reenacted in California, um, I have friends who live in Los Angeles County who are very upset. Well, uh, Ricky, one of my favorite parts of your memoir is that you grew up in Phoenix, uh, like I did. Yes. I went on to make a living that is completely based on what I think and what I say. Um, you know, I'm not a beauty pageant person over here. Everybody wants to look good. I like highlighting my hair because I, you know, I'm from Scottsdale and that's what we do. One of the most bizarre images and most bizarre uh, characters from last week's Capitol riot is this mega mascot. I mean, honestly, screw this guy. He's from Arizona, and um, he is around my age. And we went to uh, high schools that are not that far apart from each other. That is why we're seeing the That's uptick right. in migration here. It's also that because is, cartels That is exactly are... why they're coming here. No, it's it also is a problem, because but I, 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 I have my money on Joe that. Biden. Uh, I, I feel mean, that Joe Biden has accurate. empathy, I mean, it and also I think has he'll to figure this out. We'll talk more. Seeing the opening in this and taking, and people have to pay drug cartels maybe up to that's true too. to go over, and that's also what's going on. They drug cartels okay, see well, an we're opening. Find I'm out from so. Arizona. Give well, you know how you're obsessed with the royal family and the crown and everything, and you love. Yes. You're like a total yeah. British. I'm the opposite to the point yes. that apparently it's a joke on Twitter how much like people like really like to dunk on me because I love the founding fathers in 1776 and isn't the whole point of being an American that I don't have to care about this anymore? Uh, I don't really care about the royal family and I'm glad she can have protection here. But I will <laughs> say when people die and funerals happen, I am very close with all my siblings and I have a huge blended waspy family and I do not know what I would do without my brothers. I was talking to my brother Jimmy yesterday and he was in the middle of buying a tractor and we lead totally different lives and I <laughs> rely on all of them for emotional support. So oh. I think that part is very sad. Yeah. But if you need tractor help, That's away, such a feel free to call you... my brother Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Megan, that is such a coincidence because Steve was looking at tractors yesterday. I can't believe it. Are you so, serious? Um, <laughs> no. Yesterday, however, Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan's interview aired in the UK and received a very different reception from the Brits. Oh. Hey, Megan, what, what do you think about all this? <laughs> Look, Whoopi, my ancestors fought in the American Revolution. When I was growing up, my uh, brothers and sister and I would pretend to be George Washington and the Continental Army crossing the Delaware River when we would be in the creek on our rafts. I named my daughter Liberty. I enjoy going to Mount Vernon to, uh, you know, visit the home place of our founding fathers. 
I did not want to defend the monarchy. I'm a red-blooded, 100% American who celebrates freedom any way I can and always. So being put in a position where I'm supposed to defend the monarchy is uncomfortable. I want to take this time to encourage all Americans to visit Mount Vernon and see why monarchies are stupid. The American experiment is the way to go. And if we have two American women, Meghan Markle and Oprah Winfrey, who are single-handedly finishing what George Washington and our revolutionary counterparts did, I'm all for it. Okay. I actually think it's okay for people to be angry when, when their content's stolen. Like, I get up in my feelings sometimes when my talking points are stolen. So I, I think it's fine. Anna Wintour and Vogue are one of the reasons why we have a lot of toxicity in the fashion industry. So I've been done with Vogue for a very, very long time. And I would actually like some of the uh, accountability culture or consequence culture, as Sunny calls it, to actually finally filter to Vogue magazine and Anna Wintour. And you don't have to believe me. You can just watch The Devil Wears Prada. Um, when it comes to first ladies, again, I'm not a fashion person at all. Moments later. I don't love the dress she's in. I, I, I would have loved to seen her just really fashioned up. This administration has promised an emphasis on bipartisanship, but so far the only real example has been my mother. Uh, you want to see bipartisanship, look no further than the moment a few days ago when the president walked out of the Oval Office with Republicans and Democrats at his side and announced that they had come to terms on a $1.2 trillion vision for the future of American transportation infrastructure. That is not something that happens every day. On under uh, an administration of either party. There's lots of demographics that are vaccine hesitant for a lot of different reasons, and we need to be reaching out to people in lots of different ways. I'm gonna say it again. I don't think the White House is doing a good job reaching out to Republicans. I don't. I've offered my help. They haven't accepted it. They don't care. They need, they need to find some Republican that's good enough to help them with outreach. And trying to convince people in a way of empathy that, you know, we, we all need to be in this together. We're all in this together. We should all get vaccinated together. And I think it was effective. And the messaging towards evangelicals and Republicans is, you dumb hillbillies, stay the hell away from me. And I don't think there's any way that's going to convince anyone of anything if that's the messaging coming out of the White House. I have tried in all ways. I, had, I actually had an idea for an ad campaign um, that was specifically targeted towards Republicans and evangelicals um, that I have proposed that has gone on completely deaf ears to everyone. There are The messaging on this is absolute garbage towards conservatives and Republicans, and it's getting worse. It's a, I'm horrified yeah. by the way people are talking to Republicans right now in this way. I think we should, I think we should try and lead well, people along uh, instead of saying they're, they're dumb right. morons in the middle of the country that are going to kill everybody. It's just not effective. Well, I, I, I don't know that everybody's saying that. It's a really, it's just terrible all the way around. I wish we could all come together on it. But I was watching Fox and Friends this morning. Steve Ducey uh, said, get the vaccine. He, that's Fox and Friends is like the mothership of, of MAGA uh, media. And if someone like Steve Ducey is imploring people to get the vaccine, I think that's effective. And uh, not everybody on Fox News is, is you know, saying don't get the vaccine. I actually haven't heard anyone say that, but maybe, maybe I'm just misinformed. But in regard to Governor Nome, uh, the only thing I think of when I think of this woman, because I don't spend a lot of time thinking about down the, you know, 2024 and who will be running, is how bad the death rate was in South Dakota. And I remember seeing a clip on the news where a nurse got on there and she had people denying that they had COVID as they took their last breath and died. So that's that what was, I associate that ended up being with debunked. her. That was but debunked. I just that's feel like true. we just that was a lie. got. A, we just got a new president, and I'm, like, not wanting to think about the return of some of this stuff. My, all my, I know it's going to yeah. shock you, my yeah. relationships ended pretty badly every time. We believe in justice, right? There's old sayings in Texas about, you know, find the, all the rope in Texas and get a tall oak tree. Follow it, but then when he talks about taking the rope and get a tall tree, and it's an old saying in Texas, let me just unpack a few things. That's not an old saying in Texas. That comes from a great country philosopher named Toby Keith, and it's a song from 2002 called Beer for My Horses, which also recommends feeding beer to horses, which I also strongly discourage. Toby Keith is from Oklahoma, not Texas, and Representative Chip Roy is also not from Texas. He's from Maryland and Virginia. So now that we've got that out of the way. Yeah, Toby Keith also said we'll put a boot in our ass. It's the American way. I love Toby Keith. I don't know what Toby Keith has to do with this, but whatever. A new Gallup poll shows the largest increase in Democratic Party affiliation in nearly 10 years. So, Megan, what do you think of the state of the party right now? Is there a... 
you know, are people trying to figure out where they fit as Americans or as Republicans, do you think? Are, are they questioning that? Do you think that's why the shift is happening? Yeah, I think it's a really interesting time for the Republican Party right now. And quite frankly, I think we'll figure it out amongst ourselves. I don't need any Democrat or anybody on the left telling me what to do or how to think. We will figure it out internally amongst ourselves. I really like Liz Cheney. I've liked Liz Cheney for a long time. I like independent people. I like independent thinkers. I like anybody who's the daughter of a politician who shows that we can actually be successful and it's not all just nepotism. And uh, I got very excited that she followed me on Twitter recently. That's my commentary Friday. And in regard to the Naval Academy, I don't need to tell everybody about my family's uh, relationship to the Naval Academy. I just visited my dad the uh, weekend before last with my brother at the Naval Academy. I take great offense. I also think it's interesting we had a conversation about nepotism on this show a few days ago. You want to talk about nepotism? Not having to talk about the biggest scandal in the country when it, it has to do with your brother and you're hosting CNN. That's nepotism. The Cuomo family and CNN are the worst kinds of nepotism that the media has an example of. If it where my brother, if my brother were somehow the governor and he had been accused of this, you are damn straight I'd be talking about it on The View this morning. I could not actually care less about dieting or anything like that because I have so many beautiful things in my life and it, I've never not gotten anything I wanted with hard work. And I will say, just to put a cap on this, the View is 25 years old next year. We've only had one Asian American host co-host this show. So does that mean that one of us should be leaving at some point because there's not enough representation? Uh, there, we're talking about is identity politics more important than qualifications of a job? And I think that's a question going forward that the progressive left is going to have to reconcile. Just bear with me on this. Um, I am the token conservative in media, in mainstream media. I'm the only conservative woman in all of media. For any Republican in the country, you know, the, there's a lot of anger and aggression. And I tweeted, uh, you know, I understand why maybe me, I'm yeah. the only Republican you see every day, so I'm an avatar for all your anger. Can I remind Sarah, us all yeah. that we were on the cover of the New York Times <laughs> magazine as the most important political show on television? Do you forgot yes, that? Yes, but that... Okay. No, I never forget that because our EP tells us almost every morning. But I will say, if you do the metrics of the media coverage of this show, and as someone who the most of the negative coverage is directed at, because I'm the one conservative woman in all of mainstream TV, it's mostly negative. Oh, yes. Oh. Wait. I used to do college tours all the time. There's not enough money on planet Earth to get me to go in front of a college campus and be screamed at for being a conservative pro-life woman. And they're going to lose. And... I hope the country can come together and people will stop blaming Republicans for all the sins in the planet and want to round us up like we're like Bolsheviks because I just want to move on. And all I hear almost hourly, if it's on social media or on TV, is the world's coming to an end and it's all Republicans' fault. Screw Trump, screw anyone that's been associated with the Republican Party in any capacity over the last 50 years. There is no home for me on the left in any capacity whatsoever. The fact that I watch Tucker Carlson's show is probably just blaspheming enough in the house of politics that I can't do anything in any way. And by by the way, there's a lot of Republicans in the country that were really opening to work, opening to working with the other side, and all I feel is anger and hate and, and arguably more vitriol than happened during the Trump years simply because you're associated for being a Republican. So it's open season for someone like Ron DeSantis. You just can't isolate uh, non-Trump Republicans like me going forward because I'm not going to be voting for a Democrat. The flip side of this is I spend quarter of my life trending on Twitter. I trend on Twitter. I, I was trending on Twitter yesterday. And nine million times, it's almost, I don't think it's ever been positive. It's always something negative, And it's always a bunch of people. It's not just random people. It's people with blue check marks. And I do not need a pity party. I said there's no crying in baseball yesterday. I have chosen to do this work. This is not indentured servitude. But I am the one conservative woman in all of mainstream television. I'm the only one left. And with that, I am saying things that are not said in an echo chamber normally. I say things that people just don't want to hear. And if they disagree with me, it automatically becomes personal about how fat I am. I'm a disgusting white woman of privilege. I only get anywhere because of my dad. Everything you guys have already said is not anything I haven't thought and felt and been insecure about for my whole life. And the problem is every time I say something political that people don't like it becomes deeply personal and now it's involving my child. So I get it. I get why Chrissy Teigen can't do it. It has 100% impacted my mental health. I have suffered from depression because of things people have done to me on social media. But I don't feel like I'm in a place where I can quit social media because I need to use it for my job. It is a catch-22. We are living in an absolutely toxic time. I'm just going to put one more button after this. 
A day after my dad died, a picture went viral of someone putting a Glock gun at my head, a picture of me crying over my dad's casket. If you think that is the type of world we should live in and what Silicon Valley thinks is appropriate, and by the way, it wasn't taken down. It wasn't taken down for days and days and days until my husband went crazy on Twitter. We have a responsibility, and Silicon Valley has a responsibility to be relegating more of this because people commit suicide over things like this. It is a serious problem. I'm a grown-ass woman with a bunch of support with a giant platform. Do not feel bad for me. Feel bad for the teenagers who are on Twitter and young people as young as 10, 11, 12 years old who are being bullied in school and think there's no other freaking option except to kill themselves. And that's why this is serious. And if someone like Chrissy Teigen, who is married to John Legend and has what looks like a perfect, beautiful life, can't take the toxicity anymore, maybe we have a problem. And I'll probably trend on Twitter after this because of that, too. Okay. Joy.